Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Larry Lorsey. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at actions. I'm basically going to give you all the free actions you want. More specifically, I'm going to teach you how to make your own actions and then you can create all you want. You know, you can always download tons of actions all over the internet from people um, that do any number of things in Photoshop, but they don't always do exactly what you want. And so it's important to learn how to build them yourself so that then you can create actions for the things that you do or that fit the type of images you like to create. So I'm going to show you how to make a basic action and then we're going to build a few and you can follow along with me and kind of create your own as we go and we'll have one that's kind of more geared toward portraits, maybe something toward landscape. And I'll just kind of show you that process and hopefully you'll be comfortable enough by the end of this that you can make all the actions you want and uh, you will never be needing actions again. I know it sounds like a lot. Trust me, it's going to be easy. All right, well, we've got a lot of work to do. So without any further ado, let's roll the intro. All right, so let's jump right into actions. If you don't know what actions are, basically actions are training Photoshop to do a sequence of tasks for you um, at the touch of a button, basically. So let's say, for example, every time you uh, retouched an image, you made a copy of it, named the upper layer uh, retouched, and then you added a levels adjustment layer on top of it. You did that to every image. Well, you wouldn't want to do that every single time. You'd want to set up an action to do that. And so that's what we're going to focus on today. So I want you to go to your uh, actions palette. If you don't have that, you can come here to windows and you will see actions. Make sure there's a check next to it. But you're going to get into this actions palette. And you're going to see all of the actions here that you've already got. You can organize them into sets. There's a bunch of things you can do, but we're going to try and just teach you the basics of creating an action right now. Come up here to the little menu, do new action. We're going to call this one pre-retouch setup. You can put it in a different set. You can organize these however you want. Um, you can even assign them to a function key. Um, you can say, I want it to be when I do F3. I don't know what some of my function keys are already assigned to other things, so I don't want to do that right now, but that's something you can do. You can also give it a color if you want. Put it as red, and you'll see where that comes up in just a sec. So we've got pre-retouch setup. Color red, you can do a function if you want, as long as you don't have something already on that function, and hit record. Now you can see it's recording down here. You have to remember to stop it, but Photoshop is now going to record the sequence of things that we do. So I'm going to come here into layers. I'm going to make a copy. I'm going to call the top one retouched, and I'm going to add an adjustment layer for levels right on top of it. So we've got a levels adjustment here, the retouched, and the background. And we're ready to go. So I'll come back here to actions, hit stop, and there we go. It has created this action for us. There it is right there. Pre-retouch setup. So we can see it. So let's come back here, get rid of these, just like that. All we do is we come here, we make sure that that's highlighted, hit play, and there we are. It's set it all up for us, and we are ready to go. Again, if you had set an action key, you could just hit F7 or whatever and uh, go from there. Okay, so let's jump back into actions real quick, and I want to show you one more thing before we make our next action. Um, you can see all your actions here, and again, you have to come select one, hit play. One thing you can do is you can come over here to the menu again and do button mode. And basically it creates all these buttons. And so then you can just have these sitting up here and uh, whenever you're ready to do one of these actions, you just go ahead and click on it and it will go ahead and run that action. So that's kind of a faster way of doing it. Once you've got your actions ready, you would switch into this button mode and then you can come through and just click on one and do it. You can see here pre-retouch setup is in red because remember we assigned it red. Here's retouch setup, uh, one I set up in a previous uh, tutorial and I used green on that one but same basic thing so we're gonna get back out of button mode back into here but uh, so there we go so we've got that pre retouch set up let's come up with a few more that we can do now one thing to keep in mind is you do have to be careful of 
what this layer is called. For example, if you set up an action that says um, rename background play background layer to retouched and when you start the action there's not a layer called background that can lead to trouble so a lot of times it's a good idea to create your actions right off of um, a freshly opened image which doesn't always work but just something to uh, keep in mind that that can lead to problems with your um, actions so let's jump in and create another action here Let's say you like to do the dodge and burn on the 50% gray layer, right? Where you go through and um, create a new layer of gray, and that's what you do your dodge and burning on. Um, I've done a video on that. If you don't understand why you would do that, I think it's a, a really good way to do dodge and burn. Um, and you can take a look at that video up there if you want to uh, learn more about that. But for the sake of argument, let's just assume that you think it's a good idea and you want to set up an action for it. We would come up here and we would do new action and we would call it um, dodge burn on a layer. Okay, uh, let's hit record. Now let's go through and do it. So first thing we're going to do is new layer and then we will call this dodge burn. We are going to change the mode to soft light, and that will give you this option of soft 50% gray. Hit OK. There it is. You can go ahead and come over here and select the dodge tool, whichever one that you would start with. And then you are ready to go. You've set it all up. Now all we have to do is remember to go back in and stop the action recording. Go back in and hit stop. Now we've got our dodge and burn on a layer as another action. Just for grins, I'll show you another little bonus tip here where um, we're going to organize these a little bit. You can create a new set, and we can call this uh, YouTube Tricks or something like that. Put it down here at the bottom, and then all we have to do is take these, dodge and burn on a layer, drag it down into that, pre-retouch setup, drag it down into that and now when we look at this YouTube tricks folder we've got these two that we've set up right now um, sitting in there let's move this up actually to the top where it's easier to see here we go alright so there is our YouTube tricks folder that we've got two actions in there so far okay so let's create one last action I'm back here make sure that I'm back to just the background layer and what we're going to do here is kind of give this uh, kind of a vintage feel. We're going to do a little bit of split toning to it and give it just a little bit softer look, and uh, which works nice on a lot of images, and it's just kind of a fun one to have an action set up for. So we're going to come in here, go ahead and do new action. We'll call this split vintage. It's already in YouTube tricks. We'll hit record. All right. So let's jump in and work on this one. First thing we're going to do is make a copy. I'm going to desaturate that copy. Command Shift U. Then we're going to blur it. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Somewhere in, I've got it set about 25 is fine. Switch the mode to soft light. Okay, so we've got a black and white layer with a Gaussian blur on it set to soft light. We're going to bring down the opacity to well, about 37%. There's the before and after if you're playing along. Maybe bring that up closer to 50. It's just giving it a little bit of a glow. Okay, now we're going to add a color layer on top. Just come right down here and hit solid color. Set your hue at oh, around 250. Saturation at 100 and you've got your brightness at 100. It gives you this blue color. We're going to set this blending mode to exclusion, kind of like that, which I know looks terrible, looks terrible. Stay with me. We're going to bring this opacity down to probably about 15%. There we go. All right, so we've got that sitting on top of this, and we've got this. Now what we're going to do is create a new layer at the top. Again, Command-Option-Shift. E to 
get us that flattened image right up there at the top. We will call this split split vintage. Okay, so we've got that on top of that. We can go ahead and delete both of these layers now. So we've got the split vintage on top of the regular background. There you go. I'm going to come back in here into actions and stop it. Come back over here. Let's delete that. Get back to our basic image like that. Come into actions, split vintage and hit play. And there it is. It's on its own layer like that. So you can decide, well, I like the effect. I don't. Maybe this one needs to be toned back a little bit and just kind of gives it a little bit of a uh, retro type look with that different feel to it, uh, almost like it's a discolored film. You could make that more of a yellow vintage or brownish type thing, whatever you want. What I would recommend you do is play around in Photoshop with different colors until you find one that you really like that look. This is the look that I like, but play around until you find one you like and then make an action for that or do different ones. Do a a red vintage, a blue vintage, a green vintage. Uh, you can have a whole set of them. You have as many as you want. You just got to scroll through and find what you're looking for when the when the time comes. But that's basically how you set up a basic action. Now there's more advanced things. You can go through and uh, set it to stop where you adjust things as you're going. Like maybe you want to be able to tweak um, the levels to a certain setting on each image uh, rather than have it always do the same. You can have it stop at certain places. But um, as far as setting up a basic action, this will get you going through that. Uh, play with this, make some basic actions, and uh, then you can always try and uh, branch out and get a little more complicated with it. But hopefully this will get you off on the right foot. And there you go. You can officially consider yourself a graduate of Actions 101. You've got the basics now, and you should be able to run off and make all of your own actions for things that you do every day. Should be a huge time saver, at least I hope it is. If you found this helpful, I hope you'll take a second to like the video. And of course, please make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified when new videos come out. As you may know, I'm trying to reach my goal of 1 billion subscribers. And as you can see from the chart, um, it's not going really well. Hey, I'm probably going to get there eventually. I just need YouTube to uh, stay around for another couple hundred years and... I think I can be there. But anyways, I hope that helped. We've got some videos coming up that you can check out and uh, click on the uh, suggested video and jump into another one. I've even got some playlists that you might find helpful on uh, some of these different tutorials. So I will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.